Hello everyone, thank you very much for joining me. I've got a lot to share with you today and a lot for you to think about, uh, but before I get into that message, I want to let you know that my biggest fall sell is happening right now. And um, so if you're interested in remembrance, if you're interested in you know getting to the bottom of why you as a soul ended up in this place, um, you know where to find me. If you're one who does not have that luxury, I will let you know one thing. Um, the position that you're in right now as a human being, regardless of the conditions that you're experiencing, regardless of what's happened to you and what you've been through, there are trillions of souls who would do anything who would line up across the universe to be in a position to have the experiences that you're having right, in, uh, right now on earth. So what does that tell you about you? What does that tell you about the earth? What does that tell you about humanity? Um, I hope it, that is something that speaks to you at a soul level. Anyway, let's get into the messages and um, I'll let you know that the, the world stage right now is gonna get a little bit crazier. And um, you know, it seems like it's always one upping itself and um, we're at the point now that a lot of things can't surprise us. But we will remind you that it is important as you continue forward that you stay within a neutral perspective. And the reason why is if you're putting your faith in governments, in religions, in influencers, and in people, politicians, um, all of those things are going to eventually in the long run uh, let you down. And you know that is really because the thirst for old energy is too great. There are a lot of souls right now who are masquerading as light workers. There are a lot of souls right now who, um, you know, are giving the impression that they are saviors and prophets and all of those kind of things, um, but they're not any of that. Um, but keep in mind, as we go forward, the reality that we're observing is usually inverted on the surface from what it really is beneath the surface. Um, the creator. <clears throat> is utilizing both the light and the dark forces to fulfill the divine plan. But keep in mind, just because the creator is utilizing somebody to fulfill that plan, doesn't necessarily mean that they're of the light, doesn't necessarily mean that they're in good standing with their creator, and doesn't necessarily mean that it's somebody that you should give your time and energy to. So tools of discernment, tools of discernment as we go, really important. The way that you perceive the world is really important because um, engaging in it in the way that everybody else does is limiting and disempowering. So something to think about. And you should also know that a lot of the opportunity and potential that you have in your now moment were things that you crafted for yourself or left for yourself in other incarnations. So you've worked very hard to be in the position that you are now you have worked very diligently to be in this front row seat that you have watching consciousness unfold back into unity the way that it is meant to. Um, and you should also know that the lifetime you're living now is likely lifetimes in the making and the soul strategizes that way. The soul in its quantum state will have lifetimes in linearity where they have certain experiences and kind of embed certain energies and information and plant seeds um, that don't really come around for hundreds of years after. And, um, you know, so what's going on right now is really important. There's a reason that you find your perspective in this now moment where you could be anywhere else. Don't let yourself down. It's better to do the work and then rest rather than, you know, always resting and feeling like there's work to do. So let me give you a quick example of the soul incarnation strategies and how they play into the now. Um, and the same thing is true for your now moment. In this now moment you're experiencing, you're likely planting seeds for future version of you, um, you know, much further down the road. But in my situation, the lifetime I'm living now is the buildup of two lifetimes that, had, that took place previously. I had a lifetime um, in the early part of the common era, had a lifetime in the 1800s, and both of those both of those stops along the way, doing similar things to what I'm doing now in a different way, 
um, and doing them with the purpose of providing potential and experience to benefit in me in my now. So as the curtain opens and you know the the play starts, know that you have worked very tirelessly and diligently to be in the position that you are. And I have reviewed those past lives of mine very thoroughly and in their entirety. And um, I will share, share a lesson with you today that I learned hundreds of years ago. So <clears throat> the world around us is going to get noisy. It's going to grab our attention. It's going to attempt to lure us back into old ways. Um, several hundred years ago, I was doing something similar to what I'm doing now, and um, there was a lot of pressure, much more pressure than there is now. And I asked the Creator, can I just give up a little bit? Can I concede a little bit of ground? Can I change my beliefs to fit their narrative just a little bit so that the pressure is off? The answer to me very clearly and very directly was, not even a little bit. And we're in a position right now where there can be no fence sitting. We're either all in or all out, and that is up to the individual who's having the experience to determine. Less than one half of 1% of humanity has to wake up for the seeds of the new earth to, to come into the forefront. When you look out into the world and you see a lot of people sleeping, make sure that you're soft in your reactions toward them avoid terms like sheeple and NPC or anything that is belittling to their divinity even if you feel like it's inconsequential. Be soft with humanity even if you're at home alone in your own room. Be soft with humanity as if it is a child that has been through a traumatic experience because that's an awful lot of you know how it feels. Anyway, I have a couple of other things that I want to talk to you guys about, and um, I had a personal experience that was really powerful and really profound for me that I'm excited to, to bring into your awareness. So I have been practicing a method of entering the Akashic Records called dream propelling. And in dream propelling, it, I do this when I wake up in the middle of the night when I'm between shifts in, in my dream work. So what I'll do, let's say I wake up at 4 a.m., 4 a. my consciousness is not quite awake, it's not quite asleep, it's just kind of there in this, um, you know, happy little frequency. So what I will do is I will initiate the opening of the Akashic Records, and that allows me to slip into the Akashic Records as if it is like a lucid dream. And I've been doing that, and it's the, the sensations I get... <clears throat> doing it that way are different, so it's kind of like opened um, new excitement for me in doing the work, but I've also been utilizing that as a means of healing and a means of recalibrating my energetic systems. I'm going into the Akash through slipping in like a lucid dream, and I'm asking the Pleiadian guides to give me a little bit of a tune-up. So as this was happening, and they were literally, they will come around the area of your body and they'll take something out and then they'll bring it back and put it back in. Um, <clears throat> almost like they're, they're flushing the density out of it. So something caught my attention. One time they were examining my heart chakra and they made a reference to a specific number. And they said, this one is 13940. So I was like, whoa, whoa, what is that? And they let me know that that was the surface temperature of the chakra. And so, you know, that got my wheels turning a lot. So apparently your, your chakra centers exist in a different spectrum. Um, they're either in your etheric layer or your astral layer. And what happens with those chakras is that they are literally radiating energy like the stars that we see in the night sky. And apparently when that heat makes its way through the, the etheric layers, when it gets to the temporal layer, which is what we all experience here on the surface, um, the heat generating from that energy center is like a cool 80 or 90 degrees. So that was interesting, and it really, it really like made my chakra centers tangible. Because when I woke up in the morning, I felt like there were literal suns inside of my chest, cooking things. Um, you know, it was a not a bad sensation. It was a good sensation. It was powerful. It was engaging, um, and it made me 
further acknowledge or come into the awareness of these energy centers and how how really prominent and influential they are within our bodies. Um, so I think that was interesting. When you're doing your energy work, when you're looking at your centers and healing them and clearing them up, understand how powerful they are and understand that it takes many of those to allow you to function and operate as a spiritual being within a human body. Imagine the divinity of that system and the power of the creator that implemented it. Do you think it's still not important to be human? Do you think human beings aren't special? Every single person on this planet, regardless of what condition they're experiencing, is a master of storybook proportions and worthiness. Something else in this area that has come into my awareness is that some of the most powerful healers that you can find are not found in uh, the celestial realm not found in the cosmic realm. They're not found even here um, on earth, walking around in physical bodies like you and I are. Some of the most powerful healers on the planet right now are in the ocean and they are dolphins and whales. And from their perspective, they are very excited at the potential of working with you guys and healing you and helping support you on your path in, um, you know, refreshing Gaia to the state of being that she's meant to be in. So call on our ocean friends. Um, they would love to be of service for you and you know you can be at the most landlocked location on the planet Earth and they'll still be able to reach you and they'll still be able to collaborate with you and something else you should know in engaging in that collaboration again you're gonna remember all kinds of things because that is a source of healing that you've always tapped into. And it's not going to be something that you're engaging in that's new. It's going to be um, a reunion that includes a very special embrace. Okay. Anyway, I'll leave you with that. Thank you very much, my friends. Goodbye.